Hi, in this video we're going to go over the ways you can deploy code to your test and production environments uh, using the Flowsum solution. All deployments are done from branch records within Flowsum, and if you watch the branches video you realize that it is a deployment record uh, as well as a collection of user stories. You can use this same branch to deploy throughout your entire organization. So in this case I've deployed through my test environments, I've gone to production, and then I back promote it down to my sandboxes so I can keep everything in sync so all my changes are kept in sync across all development sandboxes so nothing is lost when I'm doing my development. In order to do a deployment, let me show you a document very quickly. So we've come to this point in the process now. We are at the release branch. We want to now deploy this via a manual deployment or a pipeline and I will show you and explain both of those to the different orgs in our environment. So I'm going to show you a deployment to our QA organization and what you need to do to ensure you're not going to lose any code or, or changes that were done either manually in that environment or maybe by a hotfix. So what we want to do is we want to do what we call an impact analysis. <clears throat> so you click on the impact analysis button. You select the org that you were going to be deploying to, so in this case QA. Having the org registered in flow, so we auth successfully authenticate so we can view that code without having any issues. We, and then we click on this impact analysis button. Uh, once it's done, it'll come back and we'll show you what it finds for differences. So you can see in here I have four actual conflicts that need to be resolved before I deploy this to QA. And these are three components that have not yet been deployed that we're not worried about. So I'm going to go in and look at one of my differences. So for example, we will look at a layout. So as you've seen before, this is our tool. We show you how many differences there are, let you navigate if you need to, and then we show you different colors. So you can see I have one of each of my differences in this particular screen that need to be merged. So in this case, I have a different behavior that I'm deploying versus what is in my QA org. So QA has edit, I'm deploying required. If for some reason there was a hot fix or somebody made a change directly in here to make this edit, and this is now what we want to have going forward, I just click on this arrow, and that will merge it back into the branch metadata stored in Flowsum. Once your components are in a branch, which I showed you in the orgs video, they're stored in the Flowsum organization. So these changes will not be reflected anywhere until you deploy them somewhere within the Flowsum tool. So these are just stored in Flowsum for now. Now the green changes are things I'm going to deploy, so we're not worried about that. But now we have a layout item, which is in my QA org that is missing from my deployment. As I stated earlier, this could be a hotfix, it could have been done directly. So if I leave this as is, this will be overwritten and removed. So again, I want to bring that back down to my deployment metadata. So now when I go and do this deployment, not only are my changes being deployed, but any changes that were done in that target organization via hotfix or manually are now included, so I'm not overwriting or losing anything. I would click on Save. Once all of these have been showed up as merged, I then can safely deploy my code. So let's go back to my branch. So when you want to do a deployment, there's a couple different ways you can deploy. We have a standard deployment, which you select the org, and then you push the components out to, or we have a much more powerful pipelines functionality where you can configure a bunch of steps together and execute them uh, from the click of one button. I'm going to show you the manual deployment first, then we'll get into the pipelines. So best practices uh, states you want to validate this particular deployment before you deploy it. You have the ability to do your standard validation here, but we also have a deployment analyzer within Flowsum, which is basically the validation, uh, the standard validation, but it adds a lot more power. It allows you to fix things before you deploy them. So if something was missing in here, we'll allow you to move the, refer the reference to it. Uh, for example, if it was a profile, let me uncheck this. This is a uh, pof partial profile deployment. I'll go over that in more detail. But basically this ensures that only changes that are related to the components in here are deployed. So if I have a user profile in 
my sandbox that has 100 changes that haven't been deployed yet, but only three of them are applicable to this particular deployment, then only those three changes get pushed out, not the entire thing. So I'm going to uncheck this so I make sure we have an error, but normally you would leave this checked because that is the default behavior. And I will analyze this. This will go through, look at all the components, and it will come back and tell us what it finds for any issues. Um, so if there's any components missing, um, any references in profiles that are not applicable, if there's any differences in, AP, in your um, API versions. So if you have a different version of Flowsome in your sandbox versus in your test org, it will come back and it will show you all of those and give you an interface that is very easy for you to resolve those changes. So we're almost done here. So you can see it's completed. Now there are no API version errors, so I know my APIs are the same in both. And I do have some missing components. So in my profiles, I'm missing some references. And again, that's because I'm employing the complete profiles, not the partial profile. So I can go in and actually remove this reference so they won't be deployed. So I can remove that from here. And then once I do that, I won't have that issue going forward. So I can move all of these different references in here. And then that would be the same as having this check, basically. Um, but again, this is a way you can actually fix it as you're doing your deployment. So you don't have to go back into the actual component, remove things, depending on whatever the, the case is. So once I have validated this, I then want to go in and do my deployment. So in this case, I'm going to deploy this to my QA org. I would select deploy. Select my QA org. Now if I am deploying any Apex code and I have any test classes I want to run, you can use these options to configure. So if you don't want to run tests, want to run all tests specified, etc., you can use these options to configure how you want to have those tests run. And again, this is that partial profile deployment. Um, so again, that's selected by default. So we click on deploy. Wait a few minutes. What it's doing now is it's backing up the components in that target org. So everything that's referenced in this deployment is backed up and stored in a zip file. So if we need to roll this back, we have all the comp components we need um, available to be rolled back very, very quickly. So this should only take a few minutes, and then we'll be able to see exactly what happened. So you can see the deployment uh, finished, and it come back here, and we can look at what actually happened. So you can see we were done successfully. Uh, I showed you what it's done. If you want to see the actual details, this is that log that's available in any of the deployment uh, history in here. It'll show you what was deployed, um, classes, etc., what was updated, and so forth. So all the information will be in here. So you have that record if you need to provide to auditors you know, what was actually done during this particular deployment. We have that available to you in here. So now that I've done my deployment, uh, for some reason I need to roll this back. We have a very powerful and easy to use rollback feature. Now the feedback I get from most of our customers is they really use this feature because of all the checks and balances we have in here. They really have a need to roll it back, and typically unless there's something wrong with a piece of code that didn't get caught in the testing. But rolling back is very simple to do. You click on the rollback button and it's very similar to your um, deployment record. You select the org you want to roll back. You have a list of all of the different deployments done here. So I could roll back to not only the current one, but I could go back one, two releases in here, wherever I wanted to, to, to roll this back, depending on my needs. But in this case, I'm going to roll back to the most recent deployment. So I'm going back one version here. I would again configure any tests I need to run. And then you have the ability to roll back the entire deployment, or you can go in and select one or two components, depending on what you need to do. So if you just wanted to roll back you know, this particular JavaScript file, you could do that, or you can roll back the entire deployment. So you would select all of them, which is done by default. 
you would validate this first and then you would actually roll it back. So we'll, right now it's going to do its thing. Uh, we'll wait a couple of minutes. Um, this will come in and say job completed and succeeded. This should say success and we'll be able to review what happened. Now as you can see, this succeeded. So it successfully rolled back all the changes we did. My QA org is now in that previous environment so the end users or testers could go through and do what they ever needed to do while I figure out what went wrong in my lower environments. Now the other way to deploy is I can select a pipeline and run that. I uh, will go over the pipelines in detail in another video. But once your pipelines are set up, you can select that pipeline and then I can push it off to whatever environment, UAT, production, etc. I want to and it will run. Thank you.